speaking on termite extraterrestrials. Here he is, a big hand for Bobby Madonna used to do that with her albums. 
You should come out with some sex thing in the album and go without the chart. Well, this whole thing, they put him on ABC, NBC, and CBS. You see, this is an experiment that so they say, well, once again, we can even take rap. Because they took 1980s R&B, you know, the new kids on the block, um, uh, which, which, which the white boy, which the black guy who produced new kids on the block was Maurice Starr, who first produced New Edition in 1982. So now you got all this NSYNC and all this shit here, you see this coming out, and they basically took all of the techno 80s dance music and put it behind all these white people. Even Full Force got to go right for Britney Spears and all these white people in sync because they couldn't get, couldn't get jobs, you see. So they got a way of doing that whole thing. You know, it was rock and roll when it was black, then they dropped the roll and say rock, and you think it's a white invention. But in so many words, it was nothing but a distorted Jimi Hendrix. That's the key to the doggone white rock. Nobody played white rock until Jimi, Jimi Hendrix. You see what I'm saying? But about a year right after him, Led Zeppelin and them came out, you see. Um, but the key here is, um, same thing with the metaphysical thing. This is actually a viable mystery, or uh, this is just as legitimate as the historical aspect of things that we talk about because we have bibliography. So that's the good part about it. Nobody can say this is not, not authentic because I knew when I started out nine years ago, I said, I said if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to put these, these doggone texts up their ass. That way, you know, I learned that from being in court. Put some books up there behind and corner their ass in, in, in a corner. You ain't got to worry about it no more. So in so many words, this is just as, we could, this is just as much legitimate as history, because history is a live reader point. And we're still trying to sift out various forms of history, and we still, it's debatable. You know what I'm saying? Because this thing here, I mean, because we didn't spend a lot of time recording history. We was living history. You see, so, um, um, but this esoteric science is nothing but the, the leftover stuff from the Moors, um, from the Romans who took it from Kemet, who, who got the, because uh, the, they got it from Greece, and new resurgence of stuff when they, when they went into India, when, when, um, when Britain conquered India. So, um, this is nothing but the leftover mysteries that they put a spin on and they say new age. You see? So it, it is the same old mysteries. So, in the nine years recapping, I represent, represented um, what the Afrocentric movement was supposed to go to. Now, it doesn't mean, mean that the Afrocentric movement was, was uh, anything negative or anything uh, that wasn't legitimate. It's just that the younger people were supposed to stand on the elders' shoulders. You see what I'm saying? But then again, we like to follow people. Like one day we was at Clark House one day, and there was a brother up in there, he was talking some Moorish stuff, and he was talking some electromagnetic force here, and the, the people who was following John Henry Clark was going, is that right, John Henry Clark? And he was like, I don't know, ask the damn boy. He's the one that tells you the shit. You know, ask him to say that he's the end all and be all and all. You know, he's a historian. And John Henry Clark was getting up saying, saying, well, the man is telling you this. I don't know. There's different fields in this stuff. See, we always try to make everything down to one sectarian type of religion, a type of history, a type of movement. And we don't understand this thing is multidimensional. And when you box it in, it becomes a religion. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it becomes a religion or it becomes a dogma. It becomes dogma. Um, case in point, Europe. Europe used to be an advanced, vast mystery system. They had, uh, you, you had your alchemical components, your astrological components, your astronomical components, you had your archetypal components, you had all these different types of components in the Europe. But as, the, as, as years went on and things uh, uh, deteriorated, certain things was gone. The whole, the whole alchemical point wiped out which is the basis to bring the religion to the scientific part. What is behind the gods? You see, so after, and, and so you have your, so you have your, your divination is still there. Your mythology is still there, still there. And different aspects of ritual is still there. But outside of you raising yourself up to the god based on the Yoruba components inside of you, that's where the Yoruba thing breaks down. So you become a slave with all the damn altars, or shoot this, led by this. You see, and yes, these entities 
are, are, are elemental spirits, but they also reside in you, and you're supposed to become Oshun, Obatala, Elegba. You see what I'm saying? But we think that the priest in Africa, the Babalaos in Africa, is equivalent to the doggone Babalaos that was going on concurrently with ancient Kemet, and they're two different people. And although it might be advanced and it might be steeped in tradition, there's whole vast systems, the scientific systems is gone. You see what I'm saying? They know these rituals work. But the scientific thing based on the alchemy, the electromagnetic force field, and all of the stuff that actually goes into the components that is also inside of you, is lost. So it becomes a religion. It becomes a good religion, but it's still a religion. You see what I'm saying? It's going to elevate anybody up in here that want to drop on it, but it's super dog on fat. When you lose the alchemical component to any of this stuff, it becomes a religion. Now, it, can be, it's better, it might be greater than Christianity that rock you in, but it's still a religion. You still worship an entity, and you're not raising yourself up to the illuminating point. That is what the, the, the original mystery system was all about. You see what I'm saying? Us becoming gods. So now if you if, if, if you if you're doing all of this particular stuff with the rituals and all of this particular stuff with with um with the uh, with the altars and it's not illuminating yourself, yes you yes you can do things to help you out on the mundane life. You can get money, you can get healing, because they have great healing techniques. You see what I'm saying? You can get divination to to, to guide you all around everyday life, but as far as you illuminating yourself, you see what I'm saying? These systems break down because the key to the mystery is there is no system on the earth that is left intact fully. None. Not even ancient Kemet, not Yoruba, not uh, uh, the Hindu thing, not the Sufi thing. So since we don't belong to none of that culture, we'll study all of it. <laughs> and you are compartmentalized. You see what I'm saying? We'll study all of this particular stuff. Um, so, uh, uh, we're going to get into a lot of things today. We're going to get into a lot of nitty gritty things that uh, occurred and things that went on in um, the last year, over the last year. A lot of conspiratorial things, a lot of, a lot of backfighting and a lot of things like that. And, all. and I mean, damn, eight years and nothing. You know, almost eight years and, and, and nothing. And then all of a sudden, 2000 comes. It's get Bobby Hemmett uh, year with tap, phones tap, and all this kind of thing. So they went down to the grand finale. A showdown with the United States government on my birthday. We'll get into that. I mean, I mean, really, they just they said, "Well, fuck it, let's go, let's go with all the guns." We're gonna get into all that also too. And, and this election was all a part of this particular thing, and it has a lot of lot to do with a lot of things that was going on um, on the um, in the election, especially that thing that at the Stubble Magazine from '98 that you heard me talk about. So many, uh, 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 back in 98, and I talked about it several times, that the Stubborn Magazine where they say a black hole in the, in the Milky Way, um, that's key and central to the election that went on. Uh, a few things happened. I'm going I'm to post, I'm gonna, um, I wanna post some uh, things that these are called the Congo rights. These are called the Congo rights, um, which is the here, a, a case in point, this is the dark side of Europe, of Santeria. So they said the dark side, no, this is the alchemical side. So whenever you hear the word dark side, all that means is that's the alchemical side, which is the deepest component of the mysteries. This is when it becomes beyond worship to synthesizing the gods based on the elements of the universe and inside of the, the physical body. You see, so these are the... This is the dark side of Santa Maria. In so many words, this is the underworld of the, of the deepest esoteric part of the Yoruba. So this is the stuff that the Yoruba got rid of. These are called the Congo rights. The Congo rights. And these boys here do not play. Because, I, you know, I, I, I try to use it all to try to get the most power I can get. You see what I'm saying? I try to get the power I can get. And, um... The voodoo thing was working, got some real good energy about a year ago, and on into the summer. And then I said, well, what I'm going to do is, I said, I'm going to take all of them and cross the streams. Now, you know, that's in the movie Ghostbusters. They said, whatever you do, don't cross the streams. I said, well, I'm going to cross the streams this summer. So I crossed the streams, and I got some energy, but didn't get, get the kind of energy I wanted to get. 
So I kept the, the whole ritual thing down the entire summer, almost a month, to try to get the juice. So after about a month, I said, well, I'm going to clean up the living room because my, my whole living room is an altar. Because I got this house that I've been in since um, February 99, and it's haunted. It's the best kind of place to be in, too, is a haunted house, because that means that the energy is a con conduit or it is a gateway to another dimension. You saw the movie, uh, Sleepy Hollow, and they were saying that this tree is a gateway. Well, I got a dog on um, I got a house that's, that's, that's haunted. I had to exercise some ghosts out of there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a year uh, back in 99. So, uh, so by the house being haunted, it's a great house for, to, to, that spirits don't have a problem getting or uh, coming into a uh, uh, dwelling. So therefore, you basically you just have to call in the forces that you need to call in. So I, you know, I had the, um, the, I had all the forces, the Yoruba, the Voodoo, the camera, I had all of that. And I was like, I'm crossing these streams up, and I got some energy. But I decided, I said, well, listen, I'm going to uh, take it all up now, you know, and just clear it out so I can put some more energy down. But I messed around, and I, in the Congo, because I had a black background, I said, well, I, um, my fireplace has black tiles. So I said, well, I'll leave them down. And why did I do that for? Because the day that I took up the other ones and left them down, they started working. So I'm like, man, what the hell? I, I had it down a whole month. They said, we don't share the stage with nobody. <laughs> so we don't share the stage. I said, so, oh, y'all some doggone difficult niggas. <laughs> they said, we don't share the stage with nobody. But man, and they started working. You see what I'm saying? They started working. Um, that's why you don't hear about the Congo rights. Um, only a few things on, on the Congo rights, but it started working real good. You see, it started working real good. Um, and they too are drunks also, with the, with the rum and all this type of stuff, you know. But, uh, but, but, but the juice, um, but the juice, uh, um, I, uh, I, uh, uh, but the juice actually, <laughs> the juice actually um, is real powerful. Is it, is it working? Is this on? Okay, so, um, and they took the nigga through some changes too. Um, but we'll get into we'll get into that. But right now, I want to um, start the libation. Blow the rum. And uh, get the energy coming up in here. Uh, and, and, and this is interesting too because. Oh, shoot. Oh, this is interesting. I want to put this one up. This, this particular one here. Put this up. This is interesting. Okay, this is going to work. Hold on one minute. Because. <laughs> This, this particular entity here is El Cristo Negro, which means the crucified black Christ. So this is this is fabulous and amazing. Okay. This is amazing because of the simple fact that what we have here, what we have here is a uh, you have a genuine Authentic identification of the black Christ left over in Brazil and um, Puerto Rico. El Cristo Negro. And you also have El Cristo Rey. There you go, know, because Amen Ra is also can be pronounced Amen Re or Amen Ray. So what you literally have here is number one, you have an authentic identification of a black Christ. You see what I'm saying? Outside of Christianity, because remember the origins of this comes from West Africa. You see, so very powerful. So uh, I want to um, blow four ways and get the energy up in here. Uh, so everything cool, you know. Just you know, just remember if you if you cold, keep on your coats. But we <laughs> hopefully these boys here can heat us up. Or whatever, you know. Keep on your coach, you know. 
we gotta roll with it. You know. Uh, so uh, we're gonna call out these particular ones here, and we're gonna call out other libations, a little, get a little family. So just bear with me and stuff. And we want some 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 um, some nice arches, or whatever the deal is. So um, and this is a leg bar head you brought me, right? Little leg bar head, which is interesting because this leg bar is the same as this this God Zara Banda. And also, the Zara Banda in, in ancient Kent would be a form of Tahuti, or even Anubis, which means you have to have an opener of the way, or an opener of the gateway, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to uh, invoke the rest of the gods. This particular opener of the gateway, or the opener of the way, Zara Banda is, is, is the one here with the so-called, um, quote-unquote, dark side of Santeria. Um, so, uh, as, as would be also as uh, a leg bar or uh, issue in the whole, uh, in the Yoruba thing, or even in the voodoo thing, you have to have the, the issue, and you also see this grand cross, which is the same, you see that in the Vodun, um, um, the Vodun, uh, the Vodun rites. Um, you see the same, the same cross, or uh, you see it also the staff of the leg bar. So, um, we want to give them some juice, and then we're going to uh, follow with some, uh, bringing out some other energy. Now, why is this? Because this, Anytime we have a lecture, that is a ritual. And that changes the force field, the end of the millennium. Now, Shadama said, the end of the millennium. The, great, the greatest country on earth will collect a village idiot as their leader. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, to me, Democrat, Republican, or whatever the deal is, is all the damn thing. But my point is, give me somebody that damn look good doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? This man literally has to pause every time he talks. To think. <laughs> now I said, now they playing a game on us up here. And act like they're happy about the shit. And I'm trying to figure that that threw me for a loop. And you know, two things is happening. They don't want somebody legitimate up here when this shit start caving in. So they say, hell, put anybody up there. You know what I'm saying? Put anybody up there. It's shit. It could be Britney Spears. No matter. This office is defunct. And that's basically generally what this thing is. You see. What? What? Go read the movie, My Fellow Americans. With, um, what's the odd couple name? The one, Walter Man, what's the other guy? Huh? Who? Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon and um, the other guy that played in that. James Garner. Jack Lemon and James Garner. They were the ex-presidents and they had to run for their lives and people was getting ready to kill them. And at the end, the person who was trying to do them in was the one that they thought was the dummy. They thought he, the one that, you know, the one they thought was the damn dummy, he said, you thought I was a fool the whole time. I was playing that dumb role and I was the one running shit. And, and, and he, he running the president, he running the ex-president, and nobody knows. They thinking it's some sophisticated stuff and it is the same dummy. You see? So we're not saying that this man is brilliant enough to, to, to doggone bring you to your knees, but then again, on the other hand, that's the decoy. That's the doggone decoy. You see, it's a lot of things going on, and we want to get into that also, too. So let's, uh, let's, let's do this right quick. Um, you didn't mind me taking a sip, huh? Okay, now. Well, now I have to elaborate myself. And, um, <laughs> this is interesting. This is interesting. Uh, this is Maya's room. This is, a, yeah, this is expensive, too. You didn't get all up there after a while. But it was interesting, you know. Now, it took me 39 years to become a damn alcoholic. I said, man, if I'd have tapped into this in college, I'd have been through. But anyway, I'm sitting up there <laughs> during the summer, drinking some really cool stuff. And I said, well, this stuff is just not hit. And I took me a sip of that. I said, well, you know, but what happened was I was spitting the minds every morning to the ancestors. You know, because you give them that Bacardi rum. Man, she got, uh, 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 Sister Deborah, um, had a, I came to her, she had two bottles of Bacardi rum was sitting up there but damn near a month when you drinking the stuff. But you put this up there, man, in like, you know, in a couple of days, they just sipping it down. 
So I done, so I'm, I'm, I'm spitting this stuff every morning, and I developed a quiet taste. You know, <laughs> I'm spitting it every morning. Next thing I know, I'm like, you know, shoot, I can, you know, I'm spitting it every morning. I don't even need a chaser because of simple fact. I'm spitting it every morning. So, oh, so you know, I started spitting it uh, January of 2000. By August, hell, I was familiar with it. So I say this little liquor is not doing it. And I went in there and took me about two or three shots of this baby with a shot glass, and I went to another dimension. I said, what the hell is going on here? I mean, literally, I went to another dimension. I was seeing stars, planets. I was living, you know, and I was pumping that damn very white. And I drinking Beverly. And went to another dimension. And then I figured what was going on here. First of all, this stuff is made in Jamaica. Uh, what, what year? Uh, well, this is a smaller bottle. Um, and anyway, although it might be a white company, it's black hands that made this stuff. And also, you got to realize, these forced you, the spirits actually in this thing. You see what I'm saying? There's certain things like that, like, um, there's several things, several products that our people used to use at the turn of the century. The force fields are in that stuff and it's healing properties. So literally, I got a spiritual experience. But with dealing with this stuff here, you know, like I say, pumping that, um, pumping that music, you know, that damn Roger Strauman is out and all that shit, you know, it was on. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I developed an acquired taste to it. Boy, no. And, um, uh, and this is it's called espiritos, which is the, the real name for alcohol in the, in the, in the, in the Greek and the Latin. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I want to spit this and give the juice, so, as, so we want to give a good, a good shout out. So we're going to call on Zara Banda first. Zara Banda! Ashe! El Cristo Negro! Ashe! El Cristo Ray! Ashe! San Simon! Ashe! We need to pump this thing up so we can get some real energy. Mabi Diago! Asantisma Pika Eman! Asantisma Mount Mundry! Asantisma Di Shiki Rayo! Asantisma Chala! Asantisma Centrangula! Asantisma Diago! Asantisma Di Rayo! Asantisma Chala! Uh oh, uh oh, I done messed up. Hold up, I got you. Hold on one minute. I got to get the other one because I don't want nobody burning my damn house down, fucking around and not calling out the right chip. So it looks like. We might be in a real trouble if I don't find out a level of these things. Never, never screw me up. You see what I'm saying at all? You got all of it hard and done neglected somebody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thank God. Woo! Saved. <laughs> yeah, my good deal, come on with. Hold on one minute. Mama Shala. Okay. Okay. Whew. Nobody screwing me up. Deleting these doggone fools here, you see. Deleting these fools here, I've, um, I've seen what they can do, you see. But anyway, going on, uh, I made this, um, in all of this lecturing about these things to come, there comes a time when we need some progress. You know, we need some shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? I've been out here about nine years and all, and I swear, I do believe if some stuff didn't go down last year and this year, and at least Christmas, shoot, I don't know, man. I might as well have packed it on in, you know what I'm saying? Blonde my head and, you know, <laughs> put some gold teeth in there and shit. Get me a job at Church's Fried Chicken and call it a life. <laughs> I say, fuck it. Well, I tell you, boy, it is. I'm like, you know, this is nine years and we've been talking about it. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down. And sometimes we need results. Well, I got some results last um, February when I did this uh, bull gun ritual. And, they, and I, I think the last time I talked about it, they came and they got all in my body and stuff was all up in my face and stuff like this after doing it. And that held me over, you know, until at least September when I did some stuff with the Congo rights. And that was some real good energy, real good energy. Um, then I had to renew the Congo rights um, on 12-12, which was the, uh, the, the ending of this whole election thing. And that was some real powerful energy. 
But I hit gold on the second, uh, uh, which is a, what, a month and a day ago, with some stuff that we're going to get into. So basically what I'm saying here is we got some juice. There is shit that is happening. You see what I'm saying? So we are literally seeing things in effect. So we're going to run down some of this stuff. So what we're going to do tonight is give a status report of where the hell we are. You know what I'm saying? And what is needed to be done. Now, first of all, I will say this again, that what we need is to look at anything that is irrational, illogical, and just downright foolish, or something that just basically remotely don't fit in no type of thinking that you normally have. These are the things that we need to be turning towards. Why is that? Because we're trying to create a mutation. A mutation is no matter how hard the laws or the rules are, every now and then some new shit will happen. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? When's the last time you did something that is interesting? You know, that is genius. So what we need to, to border on now is um, something that is totally off base of human everyday life. So we need to board, we need to go there on something outside of the damn box. You know what I'm saying? Like even looking at a little child and letting a little child teach you some shit. You know, I got a little a nephew that's fucking, you know the Sixth Sense, the little movie Sixth Sense? He is that. He is that all the way, you know. And so comfortable with seeing ghosts every day until it's like, no big deal. You see, no big deal. Uh, so we need to start looking into that, the strange things, more and more now, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a mutated or transmutated thought. Something that is, if we want to have a new beginning, you can't have a new beginning with the old ideas. A new beginning has to go outside of humanity. If you're going to have a new beginning. That's what this whole, this is the basis of all religion. It's talking about one day there's going to be some new shit. You see what I'm saying? You see, that's the whole concept of Christ. Christ does not represent something of the ordinary. You don't want Christ to come back here working in no fucking damn, you know, Kentucky fried chicken and shit. You're talking about cleaning some damn grease out of some barrel. You so you want some results. That means, why should you look in your endeavors or your religion or your uh, uh, anything that you're into to have a change to be some ordinary shit? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the basis of all religion is that we need something that is above and beyond ordinary life. Right? So why would you go about trying to get a new beginning with some ordinary shit? You understand what I'm saying? The whole concept, the whole basis of all ancient mythology, ancient mystery system, on down to later day religions is, we want some motherfucker new coming with some new shit up in here, you know what I'm saying, to save us. You know, you don't want no fucking, like we say, Ben Marine coming to save your fucking ass. <laughs>